Hey, what's going on? This is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. Today, I want to talk to you about my experience doing my first wedding during COVID in 2020. My name is Alex Ramey. I'm the owner of DJ Cut Entertainment, and today I'm going to talk to you about a wedding we did here in May. It was kind of the start of COVID. People didn't know exactly what was going on, so I want to give you guys my experience and what to expect going forward. Some of the stuff that I think that will kind of go away eventually, and then some of the stuff that I think is going to stick for a while. In the year 2020, if the year 2020 has taught us anything, is that life is very unpredictable and who knows what will happen tomorrow. As we do each wedding week to week, uh, we're pretty comfortable in being in the big groups, but one thing that you gotta kinda notice and what I noticed right away is this is a lot of people's first time uh, getting together with a bunch of friends and family. You know, we haven't had Thanksgiving or Christmas where everybody's coming over yet. Um, so for most people, they're kinda on edge because this is like their first big group gathering and they don't know how to, you know, intermingle with each other. I don't know if they're supposed to wave to each other, say hi from a distance, go up and uh, give hugs. You know, this breaks up as soon as you start bringing alcohol out. But in the beginning, when people get there, it's kind of on edge. I mean, most weddings people get there that you got to have an icebreaker to get them in the groove of things and move things along. But especially with COVID going on, people are on edge a little bit. And it's, it's a little bit harder to get them to kind of to loosen up and get things going and move on to some of the different events. So that's the very first thing that I noticed when I got to my first wedding during COVID. One would say Alex married Lindsay just for her cooking because she's an amazing cook, but he's eating chicken strips. So in my process of planning weddings, I always do a site walkthrough, um, and this was really crucial during this time. Um, we were about about two weeks out from this wedding. We did a site walkthrough, and I found out what the venue's restrictions are and what their different rules are. So from week to week when we were doing weddings, um, every venue's rules are a little bit different when it comes to how they handle this situation, especially if they're in, you know, in, a, in a rural area versus being in like downtown Portland. Um, this wedding we did is a place called Cooper's Hall. It's near downtown Portland. And so they're really close to a really restricted area. So I wanna make sure with the venue manager that I had everything that I needed and I had a sheet of announcements that she needed me to make to remind people because depending on where you are in the facility, there's different rules. So this particular venue, if you are seated at your table, um, you could take off your mask. If you are up roaming around inside the building, um, you had to have it on. But if you stepped outside to where like a cocktail area was, um, you're more than welcome to take your mask off. So many venues do have a cocktail area and they take full advantage of that, of being outside um, and people are able to take out their mask and, and socialize with each other. But this particular venue, and I've seen it a couple other ones, they have uh, circles where there can't be more than six people in that particular area. So when you're standing outside in certain areas, they usually have designated standing areas and you gotta be aware of that. And it gets really hard because you just start talking to a bunch of people, invite them over and you got to be a little bit more aware of the rules that the venue is going to set and making sure that you follow them. And so throughout the night, I had to jump on the microphone a couple of times and remind people um, what was going on and what we need to follow. Now, this particular ceremony was a little bit different because of the uh, small space that Cooper Hall has. So they had their dinner tables, and that's where they sat for the ceremony so as long as you're seated then you could uh, keep your mask off and that's pretty standard for all the different venues and kind of just following the restaurant uh, protocol so it's a little bit different than we're used to having everybody switch over for the ceremony and sit next to each other i now pronounce you husband and wife you may kiss the bride Um, also, a lot of these places, who you come with is who you sit. It's, it's usually not like a open seating. So, you know, doing a couple other weddings I've done, I really noticed like who your plus one is, that's who you're going to sit with. They try to put families together um, at different venues. 
Now, if you're attending a wedding in the near future or maybe even next year, uh, they do have a uh, sign-in so they can track where you're going and, and where you've been um, in case something comes back. And it's just a stipulation that they've talked to their, usually their lawyers and find out just to protect them in case something comes back on them because they don't want them saying, hey, we we got COVID when we were at this particular venue and they're just trying to stop themselves from being uh, shut down with the strict guidelines. Now this particular venue, when we started, we were gonna do a uh, buffet style, but at this venue that is not allowed. And so many places are going to family style where it's brought to you so everybody's not getting up, standing in line and going through the buffet. Now half my venues that I've worked at this summer have had this rule and others have it where it's limited to like 10 people up at a time to go through the buffet line. But I'm noticing a lot more places are going to uh, family style where they're seated and the food is brought to them. So now let's talk about the sound system on my end. So even weddings that have 50 people are taking up the space of 150 people. And usually when I have a, a large room setup, our people are spread out. We usually do a four speaker setup. So that way the people in the back of the room can hear just as well as the people in the front of the room. Now with COVID, they're using the whole venue, using every square inch to the best of their ability to spread people out. Even weddings that have 50 and 60 people, I'm still doing a four speaker setup. So that way I have sound in the back of the room and people are being spread out a little bit more than usually. Usually when we have about 50 or 60 people, we usually keep people uh, in the center of the room in, in small groups. Because of COVID now, everybody is uh, spreading out to use the maximum square footage of the facility. So when it comes to the dance party, this is where I've noticed the big difference. I've had a couple venues that didn't allow dancing at all. I've had a couple places that you could dance, but only in groups of six. And then I have other places where there's kind of no rules to dancing um, and so usually by now everybody has had some alcohol in them and they forget the rules so I try to remind them beforehand but I have noticed it is a little bit more of a challenge this year trying to get people up they'll come up and dance real quick and then they'll go sit down and the intermingling because this is a big social event they're a little bit hesitant not like they used to be um, so that's a little bit of a challenge that I have to work with, but I usually have to do a pretty good icebreaker to get everybody comfortable up on the dance floor. And then from there, we usually have a pretty good dance party, but we're also going from a dance party of like 20, 30 people where we used to do dance parties of like on an average wedding, 150 to 250 people. So it's a little bit different approach to break that ice and get everybody up there dancing. So here at this particular wedding, um, we did do some up lights to decorate the room. And then we also did spotlights on the dance floor, it made a huge difference inside Cooper's Hall. It's a very, very beautiful room. They have the Twinkie lights that are hanging up above, but it just needed a little bit extra punch on the dance floor. And I'm a really big fan of the spotlights that we do because it just draws your attention to the center of the dance floor and it looks really good in pictures. Usually uh, photographers are really happy when we add those to the dance floor and just makes their pictures look better. So probably about 80 to 90% of all the weddings that we do, uh, we have clients that add uh, spotlights and uplighting to their package. So here's some examples of what that looks like with and without. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. My name is Alex with DJ Cut Entertainment. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you guys.